Thermodynamics of Life, Occupy Wall Street Edition. I have an announcement. Announcement! I have an announcement! There's an announcement! Have an announcement here! No, I have an announcement. You are all destined to fail. Let's get four things straight. One, you must play the game. Two, you cannot win. Three, you cannot break even. And four, you cannot quit. Is that thermodynamics? Thermodynamics has no place in Occupy Wall Street. Are you kidding me? Thermodynamics has everything to do with Wall Street. Let's start with what you want. You want wealth. 71.5% of you earn less than $50,000 a year. 1% of the population owns almost 50% of the country's wealth. The rich get richer, you say. Well, let me point you to Oswald's ripening, the process by which small droplets of one fluid dispersed in another fluid phase shrink at the expense of the growth of the larger droplets. What? Huh? Allow me to explain. Imagine liquid droplets in air. Smaller droplets, poor people, experience higher internal pressure than the larger drops. In science, this is due to greater curvature in small drops, as shown by the Kelvin equation. The vapor pressure increases with curvature, so smaller droplets have a larger saturation pressure, which means they evaporate faster. The rate of growth is governed by the Oswald equation. This relates the diffusion of the molecules that make up the drop through the fluid, the solubility, the interaction of the drops with the fluid, and the difference of the average radii. As the molecules on the surface of the small drops evaporate, the radius of the drop gets smaller, and the internal, or capillary, pressure increases, which increases the rate of evaporation. The molecules from the smaller droplets get incorporated into the larger drops, which increases their size and lowers their capillary pressure, decreasing their vapor pressure and rate of evaporation. And as the large droplets become bigger, their pressure continues dropping. It's the circle of life for the droplets, and it's a droplety droplet world. So what does this have to do with economics? Well, according to Oswald, this effect is just about the smaller droplets becoming food for the bigger droplets. But in life, it's the man getting you down. It's your car breaking down and losing your job the week before your tuition's due. Smaller droplets experience much more pressure than their larger counterparts, and they will evaporate faster. Similarly, when economic times are tough, the poor have a smaller savings reserve, so they're the first to lose everything. Understand? But we want equality. Well, let's do a thought experiment. Let's say that all the world's money and people were put in a jar and energy was added to shake it up. In this jar, everyone has the same amount of money attached to them. So, the wealth distribution is equal. This is what you claim to want, right? Right! Wrong. It, too, is thermodynamically unstable. This is destined to fail for two reasons. First, it is much easier to create bigger droplets by adding energy than it is to create smaller droplets. This is like the government bailouts only benefiting big business. It's actually really hard to distribute small amounts of wealth evenly. Second, even if we were able to perfectly uniformly distribute wealth, the first droplets to fluctuate to a larger size are thermodynamically destined to grow by Oswald ripening, and the small droplets are destined to shrink. You may start out equal, but in the end, someone is going to invent the iPod. Rest in peace, Steve Jobs. Let me finish. This is Oswald ripening. If the container is shaken and droplets start out the same size, as soon as one becomes slightly larger, it continues to grow until it's the dominant drop in the market. Once someone has a brilliant idea, or becomes a stockbroker, he or she starts obtaining an unbalanced amount of wealth, and the even distribution gets thrown off. The entire economic equality deteriorates. Thus, the rich get richer, and the poor get poorer. Understand? I suppose I can see where you're coming from. See, this is not just a self-consistent fairy tale that keeps me employed. And there you have it for the thermodynamics of Occupy Wall Street. Food for thought.